Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Today episode of Nyonyo, interesting information we'll be sharing together. Thank you for joining us. For the history section of Nyonyo, our team provide an interesting short documentary about the Istana Budaya. In 2018, Padan Warisan Malaysia has declared 22 buildings in Malaysia as national heritage including Istana Budaya. This is because Istana Budaya is the country main venue for local and international music, dance and drama performance including opera, classical concert and more. Furthermore, the first theater in Asia with state-of-the-art stage equipment, Istana Budaya is rated as one of the world's top 10 most sophisticated theaters on par with the Royal Albert Hall in London. To learn more about this national heritage of Istana Budaya, let's watch together this short documentary. The Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture Refer Esmotec is the Ministry of Government of Malaysia responsible for tourism, culture, archive, library, museum, heritage and arts. Therefore, Istana Budaya is under the Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture. This is because Istana Budaya has become the National Art Centre and Istana Budaya is also the best platform for performing art activists in the country to stage the world of artists. The idea of building an international theater began with a proposal in 1964 to establish a cultural center to replace the national theater. Construction work began in July 1995 and fully complete in 1999. Istana Budaya can be proud of being the first stage in Asia to the most advanced stage mechanism for theatrical performance. The design of this building is characterized by Malay culture. The unique Malaysian Art Centre Istana Budaya is located in the Malaysia capital. There are landmarks in Kuala Lumpur City Centre near the National Art Gallery. Istana Budaya is located near Titiwang Selik in Jalan Turazak, Kuala Lumpur. Istana Budaya was first built in 1995 with a construction cost of RM210 million with an area of 5.44 hectares and a floor area of 21,000 square meters. The idea of creating of a cultural center in Kuala Lumpur emerged as early 1964. The building project was designed by Malaysian architect Muhammad Kamal Yaakob. Performing art theater in general is a beach stage and usually beautiful and interesting place. It has its own value history. Among the world, famous theater are Palau de la Musica Catalana in Barcelona and Royal Harbour Hall in London. In our country, we are not left behind. It is known as Istana Budaya. Eastern Hall that have a variety of cultural uniqueness in a country can be advantage for Malaysia. It is seen as a national property of heritage that must be protected. Istana Budaya has hosted many famous opera performances including The Merry Window, La Boheme and Carmen accompanied by the National Symphony Orchestra. This is also the main place of successful local music production Putri Gunung Ledang. On 15 September 1999, the fourth Prime Minister of Malaysia Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad officially the opening of Istana Budaya at Jalan Tu Abdul Razak. It is a major national theatre of international class. More interestingly, Istana Budaya is now recognized as the 10 largest and best stages in the world. This is because its advantage have technology sophistication comparable to international stage. Istana Budaya aims to raise the standard of performance art, develop art in excellent in theater and art. Since 1964, the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting and the Ministry of Culture and Social Welfare have submit proposal to build the National Cultural Centre of Malaysia. The proposed initial site is in Lamba Pantai, which is located between the Malaysian Broadcasting Centre and the University of Malaya. 
The National Cultural Center is planned to create a cultural complex that includes other components, namely the historical museum, national art gallery, national planetarium, main stage, restaurant chain, and cultural art shopping mall. In 1994, the Experimental Theatre was officiated by the then fourth Prime Minister of Malaysia, Yang Bahagia Tun Mahathir Mohamad. KBN is the National Theatre Division under the Ministry of Culture, Arts and Tourism. In the same year, the construction of the National Theatre was realised starting with the sign design work, building design selection and financial planning. On 15 September 1999, history was created when the National Theatre was officially known as the Istana Budaya. Purpose Construction of Istana Budaya In 1964, proposal for a National Cultural Center 1971 creation of the National Cultural Planning and Discussions on the Establishment of the National Theatre 1972 National Cultural Group KBN was established at Jalan Ampang 1973 KBN was moved to the National Cultural Complex at Jalan Tun Ismail In 1974 operating professionally and focus was directed solely at the art of dance and traditional music 1995, the current site at Jalan Turazak was chosen as the new base. Construction began. 1998, construction complete. And 2000, abolishment of National Theatre to Istana Budaya. Currently, the main purpose of Istana Budaya is actively produce a high-quality production and great performance by firstly, enhance the aesthetic achievement in Malaysia performing arts, Second, creating professional theatre. Third, creating a high-quality theatre. Fourth, build an artistic audience that can appreciate art. And lastly, stimulate the culture of sponsorship. Building Design of Istana Budaya The attractive building design of Istana Budaya is inspired by architect Muhammad Kamar bin Yaakob from ADC Architect Company Sendirian the plan of Istana Budaya is inspired by the shape of Wabulan, a traditional Malay card. The plan is then modified into a combination of two diamond shapes. Furthermore, the roof took inspiration from Siri Junjung, a multi-tier floral arrangement of Siri or bitter leaf used symbolically during weddings, festivals and welcoming ceremonies. Lastly, the layout and space of Istana Budaya is represent a traditional Malay house which the building is divided into three areas. Firstly, the serambi as a lobby and foyer. Second, the rumah ibu or main house as the auditorium. Third, the rumah dapo or kitchen as the stage and rehearsal hall. Building Materials of Istana Budaya First, steel bars covered by reinforced grid. Next is turquoise bolts of tiles with gable. Aluminium was used on exterior walls because of the withstand of rust towards the humid climate. There are also the use of ceramic tiles which made from clay that has been permanently hardened by heat. Budaya also involved with concrete. For example, perforated concrete were used at the back of the building for the natural light. Construction method of Istana Budaya The roof was built with the folding method. Folding techniques are popular in architecture design mainly for two reasons, which is possessing creative architectural and also generating aesthetic and deployable architectural.
kuning shilling slab of istana budaya also use the gede clamping instead of welding. After two decades of operation, Panggong Sari Istana Budaya was closed for six months starting 1st May 2017 for maintenance and upgrading work. Istana Budaya Director General Datuk Mohamed Johari Sarani said, The main focus of the closure of Panggong Sari was made because Istana Budaya realised that many equipment provided for the use of the show has expired. He said, taking into account the safety aspect of the productions that perform at the Istana Budaya in the future, new maintenance upgrades work need to be done. Prime Minister Datuk Sri Najib Raza also suggested that this upgrade work be made so that Istana Budaya remains the top 10 stages in the world. For the past 8 months, Istana Budaya main stage Pangu Sari was closed for upgrading work. It received a facelift in the form of an audio system, electrical work and audio seats among other things. Furthermore, Istana Budaya continues to upgrade its technologies to be on par with those used by other theaters in the world. These include computer control stage mechanism, lighting system, audio-visual system and special effects in Panggung Sari. Only main auditorium Panggung Sari, but the smaller auditorium Lambang Sari also in Istana Budaya have been under modifications and upgrade. In 2017, Lambang Sari was also closed because it was involved in electrical maintenance work of electrical wiring. Given that it was the month of Ramadan, electrical maintenance was done early at Lambang Sari. Istana Budaya always opened the door for local artists to stage their work. Easy to say, there is no term long live at Istana Budaya even though the Panggung Sari Hall was closed for a while for upgrading and maintenance work. The interior decorations of Istana Budaya Istana Budaya truly reflects a blend of the best aspect of the Malay culture which can be summarized as follows. Wow Bulan This traditional Malay kite is used as the main motif of the theater floor, Sireh Junjo, a multi-tire floral arrangement of Sireh or petal leaf used as a symbolic piece for Malay's wedding, festivities and welcoming ceremonies is reflected in the entire roof of the theater. Furthermore, Payan leaf which signifies the beginning of Wayang Kulit also decorate the theater's lobbies and its walls are elegantly adorned by the exquisite artwork. The interior of Istana Putaya Kuala Lumpur made extensive use of Langkawi marble, while high quality tropical wood is used for the door which feature hand carved flower and leaf motif. Furthermore, the wood carving in the wall of Wangal Sari add to the elements of the hall which provide a more classic Malay style ambience. Istana Budaya have three historical value that have many value to appreciate, such as Tata Sri Najib Turanza as Prime Minister in the event to launch MRTM Chinese New Year Sungai Petani on 2018. Secondly, is the concert musical by Permata Seni on 2018. <laughs> Lastly, various of artists that have the concert in Istana Budaya such as Datuk Siti Nurhaliza, Asmidar, and that to end myself. Thank you for watching.